All right, so today we'll be learning about polar coordinates, which is the beginnings of understanding of the polar coordinate system. Uh, now, to understand this, uh, you have to understand that rectangular coordinates, which is made up of x and y, uh, they make equations that are really nice for a lot of, if not the majority of systems we've worked with so far. But there are going to be some complex graphs that if we try to write it out, and actually have it be represented, it's going to be a lot more complex than we would like in rectangular coordinates. So that's where polar coordinates actually came into play. And polar coordinates are uh, drawn up by a, a thing called r comma theta instead of our usual uh, simple x and y. And I'll explain that except why we're going to use r and theta. Okay, now our origin in the polar coordinate system is going to be called the pole so that's going to be our origin and our polar axis is going to be the positive uh, x axis okay alright so those are our two things that we're working with okay now polar equation uh, for example this is actually uh, going to be working with something uh, that we're going to know this is r equals sine of theta just one of the example of many types of polar equations we're going to be working with and you're going to find that when you see what this graphs you're going to go oh well that's that's a lot easier than rectangular form okay in rectangular form once again we're comparing the x and the y to it now the polar form is actually can be superimposed on top of the rectangular form and quickly take over it, but we do have to use a different thing and that's using r and theta. Now we'll talk about multiple representations of r and theta and the distance formula in a second, but right now I want to go to the actual graph so you can see what we're talking about. Okay, so as you can see here's the rectangular form and let's say we're graphing 2 comma 2. Okay. All right. Now that represents, and this is what is called taxi cab geometry. In other words, if you pretend this is the grid map of a city, uh, and more likely it's going to be probably something like New York, you drive two blocks east and two blocks north, and you get to this position. Okay. There's no way of going through these blocks because there's all kinds of houses and everything. So that's why we don't really talk about this as the crow flies type of geometry. We talk about this as the type of taxi cab geometry. Okay. All right, now let me show you what the polar grid is going to look like. Voila. It looks something like this. Now this is kind of cool and it's a little bit different. As you can see, 2 still stays right here, but it's no longer represented in rectangular form, but it's represented in polar form. Okay, now R, R and theta, so parentheses, R and theta. Let's get a comma in there. R, R, and theta are going to do the same thing, except R is going to be our radius. From the pole. Okay, so it's going to be the distance from the pole, basically. Okay, and our theta. Oops. Theta is going to equal the angle from polar axis okay alright so technically this point right here is going to look a lot like something like this now this is actually going to be a little interesting because the formula for R and theta here are going to be really kind of cool and they're going to be kind of aligned up okay All right, so R is actually represented in this form. R is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay, and theta. Let me see. I just got to remember real fast. Theta. Oops. Let's put a quotation in there. Theta is going to be two, three, three. Is going to be arc tangent of y divided by x. Okay, and that's the cool thing about that, that those two conversions. We'll talk more about this in a sec, but I just want to show you exactly what they are. So technically, r in this case is going to be 
the square root of two or the square of two which is four plus four and that's going to be the square root of eight so this r is actually two root two okay now if we do arctangent of theta that's going to be two divided by two which is one and the arctangent of theta is going to be 45 degrees now if I wanted to represent the same type of point on my graph that I need I would need to put it into polar form so here's what it's going to be two So do I have the space pi divided by four? And voila, you can actually represent this real fast because what it actually can become is I can represent x, oops, x is equal to r times the cosine of theta and y oops let's go y equals r times the sine of theta let's get that back boom there we go okay all right and so those representations actually help out so i could actually represent that point by re-representing it not as x and y but actually its polar form Okay, so it's actually some cool stuff. So you can actually see it right here. It's really, really, really cool how you can represent points in the polar form. Okay, all right. Now, let me explain real fast. Let's go down to an actual one. Let's get rid of uh, this one right here. Okay, what if we were actually able to graph something like r equals sine of theta? Okay, now when you're doing this on Desmos, uh, you are going to have to use the keyboard function at the bottom go to the ABC part and then find theta at the bottom because this is going to be lowercase theta and as you can see that's really interesting but that's actually just a circle okay and we're going to see and usually a circle would be represented as uh, this one would be represented as uh, I believe x squared plus y minus one squared equals probably a half maybe 0.25 is what I think this one would actually equal okay and so this graph right here takes over this one and here let me get rid of a couple of these because we don't need these conversions anymore I want you to see the relationship between the two and so this would be x squared and you can actually superimpose the two because they're really easy to do so y minus 1 squared equals 0.25 oh a little bit up so I'm going to bring this down a little bit there we go and as you can see this is a little bit more complex to actually write out than just this one so that's why we actually have the polar functions is that they're a little bit easier to work with than just something long and a little bit more complicated now just imagine this is just a circle with a radius of a half, okay, and we can just re represent it as r sine of theta, okay, all right, and this is just this is a little bit more complicated than what we would like, but in actuality, it's really easy to just write in polar form, so that's why we have polar form. All right, now multiple representations of r and theta. Now, here's an interesting thing is, is that you can have multiple representations of r and theta as you can add or subtract 2 pi k to the theta and get the same representation as a, a regular one and it's really interesting uh, when you work with it or you can do the negative of it and then add an odd theta a pi an odd pi to uh, theta to where you can get uh, a, a representation of it so here's some interesting facts that you can actually do so let's start drawing up some Okay. All right, so let's go back to that original representation, which was 2 comma pi force. Now, I'm not going to draw the circles to represent it, but just imagine this is two units long, and it's pi force. So this angle right here is what it's going to be representing. Okay, so this is we'll call this one alpha. 
Nope. There we go. Okay, so there's the alpha, or I'm sorry, why am I calling it alpha when it's actually theta? Let's call that. There we go. Okay, so there's theta right there. And then right here is going to be the radius. So that's the actual length of it. Okay, so now if I wanted multiple representations, all I have to do is add a 2 pi or subtract a 2 pi to actually get another one. So another representation would be adding 2 pi. So I'm going to add 2 pi. So this is going to be uh, parentheses 2 comma uh, 2 pi plus pi force is going to be 9 pi force. Okay, that's another representation of that angle. And what that's doing is, if you remember, we talked about this, okay, that one would be going around once, which is 2 pi, and then it would be going around again, and it ends in the same spot, as long as I have r being the same. Okay, all right, now if I subtracted 2 pi from the original, so that would be 2 comma, and then pi force minus 2 pi is going to be negative 7 pi force, okay? And so that one would be going in the other direction. So if you remember your negatives, this would be almost negative 2 pi, and it's going back to this spot right here, okay? All right, so let's get rid of those. Okay, so we can go back and look at the other one right here. All right, now, if we wanted to do another representation, we would just do the negative version of it. Okay, and this is interesting. Whenever you see a negative radius, that means you're going in the opposite direction. Okay, so I'll explain that in one sec. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a, a 2k, uh, well, k can be any integer. Okay, all right, so we're going to add an odd 2 to it. So it's going to be 2 plus 1, which is going to be 3. So you could add 3 pi. And once again, I'm just using, I'm just using whole numbers of 1 right now. You can use halves. You can do all kinds of stuff with this and just work with it this way. Okay, so it's actually kind of cool. Um, so 2 pi, uh, well, let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's do an actual one. Yeah, let's just do where k is 1. So that would be 3, so that's plus 3 pi. Okay, so plus 3 pi. And 3 pi plus pi force is actually going to turn into... Let me see, that would be 12 pi force, so that would be 13 pi force. Okay. All right, and so what that means is that we're going to go around once, 2 pi, or 8 pi force, and then we're going to go around another pi halves time, and then we're going to go around to right here. Now that point should end there, but because of this right here being a negative 2, that means we go in the opposite direction. So that means we go back here to right here. And it will actually represent it right there. So there's actually some really cool stuff just working with that, okay? All right. And then if we did subtraction of that, let's make k be 0. Okay, so we would add just pi right there. So that would be negative 2 comma, uh, so that would be 1 pi plus it, so that would be 4 pi over 4, which would be 5 pi force. Okay, and that would get you in the same spot, except it's just going around this way to here, and then it's coming back to here. Okay, now the distance formula for the polar plane is going to be a lot like some formula you've used in the past called the law of cosines, because guess what it is? If you have two points that are polar, and you write them there, you always compare them to the origin. You're making a triangle out of it, so you want that third side working with it. Voila, you have the distance formula for polar plane, which is the law of cosines. That's it for working with polar coordinates. I'll talk to you later. Bye.